so today I want to show how Hugo can be uh, deployed to the GitHub Actions and same can be used for uh, other systems such as Netlify or AWS S3. And let's start from like, what is Hugo? Uh, so Hugo is the uh, static site generator. There is the plenty of similar tool available for diff different languages. For example, for Python, there is the Pelican, for uh, Ruby, there is the Jekyll, which by the way is natively supported by uh, GitHub pages. But I choose Hugo uh, because I have like, I, I choose by language. I have the most experience with the Golang. So I decided to go this way in case I need to like fix something because all of them work in the similar way. Uh, they support uh, like templates, for example, for Pelican, that will be Jinja, for Hugo, that's Golang templates. So how Hugo work? You can uh, like basically uh, create a bunch of MD files, like Markdown, where you add some text, and Hugo, based on this Markdown files and Zim, it will generate a website for you. And that's very, I think that's very like helpful if you want to build a documentation website. I saw that some open source project are using the Hugo for, um, not, not only Hugo, but uh, in general static site generators to generate the documentation because you can simply describe everything in Markdown and generate some nice looking website which can be available for public. So uh, why why I choose Hugo? Uh, it was like not my first choice, Hugo. Uh, what I wanted to do that uh, create some uh, website for myself where I can uh, publish some topics that was not not for the documentation. Because when I when I learn something, that's always easier for me to learn when I uh, like try to describe describe that, and I decided it will be nice to publish it somewhere. So well, my first choice was Flask. I built the website, but uh, that was a bit hard. I'm, I'm not the Python developer, and that was a bit hard for me to support, to uh, develop new features that take time. So I, and the issue was with the database I used for that, um, uh, I forgot the name of the platform. Like the database was free, but really it was hard to manage the backup. So I, I switched to the WordPress. I choose some hosting and I, I moved my post to the WordPress website. Uh, that was uh, easier managed than Flask, but that's required knowledge of PHP. And I don't like how to edit uh, Zims there. And uh, I, I decided to not go with WordPress because also I, I pay for the hosting every month. So I, I go to the Medium. Medium is also uh, very good, but it do not allow you to change anything. So you have the default text editor and you can't change. And I don't like uh, the text editor. And finally, I saw some post about, uh, I, I saw a post about general about static site generator. And I saw that maybe it would be uh, nice to use for, for my need. And I did research about few available uh, uh, generator and I choose Hugo. Uh, so what Hugo do? You basically uh, choose the, I, I already, sorry, I already said that. So um, I already said about Markdown and next important uh, part of the Hugo, it's Zims. It's, it's go uh, without any Zims. So if you just uh, build your, like try to build your website, you won't see anything because that's uh, like, th this do not present, but Hugo provide you the uh, site where you, where you have a list of, huge amount of the themes so you can choose basically any of any of this and for example for my website i choose terminal so this is this is my and i can go here to the home page there is the will be documentation and uh, what's most important that's example of a configuration file basically you would need to take this configuration file but we will talk about this a bit later so hugo supports two way uh, to add them in uh, in uh, your project so first you can just download the zip archive here like you can just download and unpack in the zims folder under your website and this will work uh, but it's hard to like update because website, like for example, this Zim is updated from time to time and you each time you need to download this archive and it's just hard to manage. So the other way, 
uh, that's used uh, git submodule. So there should be a command. So you can like you can just clone, you can download zip, or you can use submodule. I choose the submodules because it uh, allow me easily update uh, the the theme when when I need it. Also, uh, if you want to modify uh, the theme, also you can you should fork, and you can like add it by yourself. And it's also a submodule uh, help a lot to uh, to modify it. Uh, so what is the GitHub uh, GitHub pages? So you can just basically publish there your uh, static website, your HTML files, CSS, and it will be immediately available. You don't need to basically to do anything. And uh, for Hugo uh, approach. Uh, I would need to have the two repositories. One will be uh, for the uh, GitHub pages and no manual changes will be allowed there. Like everything will be done through Hugo deployment and another repository where uh, content of my website will be stored. So I can share you this. So here I have uh, one, it's, it's private, uh, where I'm store my con content. So I have here my post, I have here like some static files, configuration, and the another site, it should be named as with github.io to be available for the GitHub pages. And I, I'm not doing any changes here manually. Uh, every commit to this repository automatically is deployed to, to my website. And I'm doing that with the GitHub Actions. Uh, basically, I have two GitHub Actions available for my repository. So if I will go here to the Actions, I can show you that I have uh, this workflow for uh, deploying. And this review doc, it's uh, another awesome tool which can uh, allow you to check your code or uh, like, I, I don't have here basically here code, just markdown and it can check my markdown for any syntaxation errors. Uh, so review doc is the Golang go tool. Uh, it, what what it allow you to do is to run any kind of delinters, and you can run a bunch of delinters as part of your CI for uh, different languages. And what's very good that they provide a uh, different kind of uh, GitHub Actions uh, templates, so you can just reuse that. For example, I'm using the language tools for. Um, uh, for review doc, I can just review doc, and here is so that just review doc. I can find GitHub Actions, and I don't need to write write any uh, custom scripts. I can just reuse um, pro provided this template. There is the simple uh, configuration which I, I I can copy, and my repository will be scanned. So I can show you in the my repository. So here in the GitHub, I can show my configuration file. Uh, every GitHub action should be stored under .github workflows and review doc. Uh, so what I like the most with the, uh, with the GitHub action that I can have as many this YAML file as, as I want, because previously I used the Travis, I used CodeShip and I don't like there that you can have only one file and in, on, in this one file, you need to describe everything. Uh, here I can have as many workflow as I want. So that's a uh, very simple uh, name, it, how it will be displayed on the uh, GitHub on, that means to trigger just only on the pull request. I'm not trigger a review doc on the push. And I have just the, the job, which first step it use action checkout that will uh, clone my repository. And then I'm running action language tool here I'm specifying the version, few parameters required. Uh, secrets GitHub, GitHub token, it's, uh, autom uh, popul it's automatically populated. This variable is always available inside of your GitHub repository. So, and I'm just executing this uh, language tool. And if you will back here uh, to the GitHub, to my repository, I can show you how the, out how the output looks like. So let's open this one. And this is the, the same step which was uh, described in my configuration file. First is download some Docker images, then run checkout to clone my repository. And after repository uh, is cloned, it uh, 
uh, scan scan my markdown files and if there are some syntax error is found it automatically push a comment to to the pull request i'm not sure if i have uh, that let me show you maybe it will be some something here just yeah this is the example so github actions found that like i i missed some comma here and I, I fixed that and I, I committed. So that's the first GitHub action which I'm using. Uh, the second GitHub action uh, that for uh, that for deploying website itself to the GitHub pages. So let me go here. That's another one. And uh, this is a bit different. Here I am uh, I'm executing only this GitHub action on push to the uh, master branch. It's OS, which I'm using the same checkout. And this step I was able to add uh, because I'm using the sub module. So each time when my uh, website is built through the GitHub action, before that latest version of the Zim is downloaded from, uh, from the repository. Uh, also Hugo provide uh, also action to uh, deploy, uh, build uh, this one for setup Hugo. So this I specify as, as parameter version of the Hugo, which I want to use. And it's automatically set up for my GitHub action, Hugo and all the dependency. Then I'm built my Hugo website. Let's create uh, the public directory. And the, under this public directory, there is HTML files related to the, my website. And the last part of the my workflow that's action GitHub pages. So what it does is just download, uh, upload uh, content from my public directory to uh, my external repository. Also, I need to provide here my personal token, uh, username, uh, user email, and publish branch. So every time I'm doing the commit to a master branch of this repository. Uh, it published it here so and you can see like commit looks like this and let's show me the ci job itself so here for example i've updated the version of the hugo to the to the latest one and the same so set up hugo there's download uh, download hugo and do some configuration then Hugo built uh, built my website. It's it's display how many pages available and some other configuration, and finally it's doing the deployment to it's it's create commit and it's a push commit. So this is how how I'm deploying my uh, Hugo website. Also, very important part of my workflow is depend that a bot. I'm using it a lot on my uh, different projects. It's uh, really helped me to have uh, always latest version of the my packages, and I can show you how this look like. So first, uh, let me show you the config. Uh, it's also should be under GitHub uh, directory, but not inside the workflow. So in in this repository, I'm using that only for the GitHub actions. For example, on my other repository, I'm using that also GitHub actions plus GoLang to make GoLang packages is always up to date. And directory, this is the, the for for the um, GitHub actions, it should be always the slash. For uh, other languages, this value can be different. Like depends where are you storing your like Go mod or requirements txt, and how often I want to check for the new version. It, in current situation, it's daily. Uh, for GoLang, I have the weekly because uh, I'm using their AWS SDK, and they released every day, and it's create just too much pull requests. So I, I have it like on Monday, and on Monday I have one pull request with the old packages which need to be updated. And let me show you how the pull request looks like for the, uh, like this was created by bot, uh, update action checkout requirement to uh, this version. This uh, published some uh, release note, change log, what commit is available and in file changed, just this uh, two lines was added. And that's completely automatic. I, I do not, like after I started to use depend data bot, I'm not updating any packages uh, by myself. Like it's, it's I, I have them always up to date and this is automatic. I uh, also want to sh show you uh, like uh, 
website configuration. So uh, how, how your website looks like, everything is sprite in config toml. That also can be used as, as YAML, uh, but my, my theme by default give this as, as toml. So uh, here, uh, like basic configuration, uh, main that is the theme, what theme do you want to use? And it should be under themes in with the same name. Uh, some Google Analytics, your title, and it has uh, support of the discuss uh, comments. Uh, uh, like by default, you don't need to configure anything. So you just need to register there and comment is supported. This is some uh, configuration related to a website itself, like my GitHub, email, Twitter, like what information will be available. Uh, there is some metadata related to the languages. I have uh, its website on the two languages, Ukraine and, and English, how the menu would look like, what the uh, item will be available there, and how the link look like for my website. Uh, but when you create your GitHub website, it will have the DNS name as this, ampostuman.github.io. Uh, but unfortunately, GitHub allow you to change this name to any name what you have. So I, I bought uh, DNS name uh, for myself and uh, it's, it's really easy to uh, add this DNS name to the GitHub. First of all, GitHub provides few DNS records which need to be created. And the second important item is to create, have in the root of the repository this file with the name CNAME and you should put here your DNS name. So for Hugo, everything what you uh, store in the static directory after build will be available under the root folder. So here in my repository, I have here at the static, but if I will go here, there is the uh, CNAME file uh, with, with this content. Because if I uh, first what I tried to do is I've pushed in this repository changes manually, but they were overrided uh, by by Hugo deployment. So this is this is how it should look like in, in static and it's published automatically. Uh, another important item when you add this CNAME file is to change your DNS name in the uh, setting because for your website. So if you'll go here, there is the section related to GitHub pages. So that's, that's he here really simple. You need to add custom domain and enforce STPS. Like it's obvious what it does, uh, but this option became available uh, after a few hours. Documentation say that it can be available uh, like after 24 hours. Like I, I have it available like in, in three or, or four. And finally, uh, I can I can go to the this URL and I can go to the my um, domain name which I bought and I will be redirected to the my website. So here is how my website looks like. I have uh, two, two languages. Here I added some links and I have here some posts. Uh, so that's all. Do you have maybe some questions? A uh, question is about, can we use some custom teams, uh, temps or is yeah, there available? Yeah. Uh, there is a huge list uh, of, of them. There is the Hugo and you can easily create any, like if you know some HTML, JavaScript, you can easily build it by yourself. That's like Dim itself is very simple. There is some layouts and that's just, just HTML files and you can, you can create you can choose your design, you can build whatever you want. You just need to know some Golang templates plus HTML plus JavaScript. Mm 